Hello and welcome to my math lab. This is an intro video to entering answers. Um, it goes along with your assignment number one, learning how to enter answers in my math lab. I strongly recommend that you watch this video and then try this assignment as well on your own before you try the math assessment test. So let's get started. Assignment number one here. Okay, starting, let's just start with question number one. Okay. Beautiful. First question um, is a multiple choice one. So this is just practicing how to enter answers in my math lab. So first thing it asks you to choose a smiling face. So that's C. So to choose C, you click on the bubble beside there. And then you'll notice that this turns blue, this bottom answer, check answer. Well done. Okay. To move on to the next question, you don't want to click similar question here. You just click the arrow and move on to the next one. Beautiful. Um, next demo here is the drop down menu question. To get credit for a question, your answer must be correct. So notice I just hit the down arrow and I get a list here of two things. You don't want to leave a blank that's going to be marked as incorrect. You need to choose an option. So correct is the correct option. Final check. And then it prompts you to move on to the next question if you get that right. Beautiful. Um, now, you, um, you can also try an incorrect answer here. Now, for your math assessment test, uh, you only get one chance at each question. So uh, you don't want to be putting in any incorrect answers to try the response. But in this learning assignment, go for it. So here, let's try an incorrect answer uh, for 4 plus 1. Let's say it's 6. Check the answer. Ah, sorry, that's not correct. Okay, let's go back and try the correct answer, which is five. Notice you've got a little box to punch it in. Check your answer, and fantastic. Okay, let's continue. Okay, now we're gonna play with the math tool palette. And, um, okay, it says to delete any unused templates, so let's see what that looks like here. So if you'll notice this blue empty box, that blue one and that blue one, that's what they mean. Uh, so they shouldn't be there. You want no blue empty boxes. Notice here this blue box has a five within it. That five is meant to be there in the bottom. So which one of these is correct? This top one A is correct. Check answer. And wonderful. It adds a little note there. Uh, and now we get to play with what's called the math palette. So when I click in this answer box here, this pops up. This is the math palette. Okay, so let's practice entering exactly this. So x squared over 3. Okay, so click in there. Then the first thing I'm going to punch in is that fraction. Okay, x. Now I want to square it. There is the squared or the superscript option, which is the 2. Now to go down to the bottom, if you simply click, you can't get down there, use your arrow keys on your keyboard. Um, so I want a three on the bottom. Now, check answer. Fantastic, okay. And let's continue. Good. Okay, a little note here, if you, if the, it's prompting you for the answer for x, don't retype in, let's say x equals four. If it, if it gives you an answer box here, x equals, just punch in the four, if that makes sense. That's what it's trying to get at there. Rounding, it will tell you if you if um, it wants an answer rounded and it'll specify how many decimals. Okay, you guys will get some practice at rounding in the math assessment test as well. Uh, now, next thing, if there's more than one answer to enter, they have to be separated by commas. Be careful, again, using what's called this math palette, you have to be careful. Um, <clears throat> okay, this first one here, um, these are the four possible answers, but there's a typo right here. The comma is within the absolute value symbol, so this A is not correct. The next one, this comma is down with a 2. It shouldn't be there. It should be on the outside of that fraction, if that makes sense. And the next one is actually the correct answer. The last one has a mistake. The comma is within the square root. So when you're doing the commas, just make sure they're outside of the function, so in this case the square root, or the fraction, or the absolute value, if that makes sense. So C is our correct answer there. 
Now, in general, in your assessment test, you're not going to have to put in too many answers for any problem or too many complicated answers, if that makes sense. So this won't be too much of an issue on your assessment test. Now, sometimes you're allowed to enter a range of answers. They would all be marked as correct. So here, it just asks you to enter any number between four and six. So I'm just going to pick five. Check answer. And yes, great. Let's move on to the next question here. Um, what you'll notice in the bottom left as well, it shows you how many parts there are in a question. So only one part to this question, one part remaining. Okay, and we're going to solve this 4x squared equals to 676. So let's just try that out and then we'll click continue over here. So 4x squared equals 676. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by 4 first. And that's going to give me that x squared equals to, bear with me as I calculate this, 169. What you'll notice, I can't actually pre-calculate my answers because every time you try this assignment, the numbers will change. So if you decide to redo this assignment, you will get new numbers. Also, you will get different numbers than I have here. Um, okay, next thing. What you have to be careful of with squared numbers, when you square something, you drop the negative symbol. So x itself could be either positive, the square root of 169, or negative, the square root of 169. It could be either because once you square it, the negative symbol gets dropped. Square root of 169 is 13. So our possible answers are 13 or minus 13. Now, going back to the My Lath Lab, how do you enter that? You have to separate your two answers with the comma. I'm going to put in the lowest one first, the negative 13, comma, positive 13, and check my answer. Well done. Move on to the next one here. Good. Next thing, we're going to plug in a minus 1 for the x and a 3 for the y. Again, you'll have different numbers in this, but a similar question when you try it. So let's try that out. So instead of the, uh, the x, we're going to put in a minus 1 here, 5 times x. Now times y to the power of 4. So for the y, it's going to be 3 to the power of 4 um, plus 8 times y, and y is 3 again. Okay, so this is going to give us minus 5. Now, 3 to the power of 4, let's see what that gives us. Again, bear with me here. I'm going to have to calculate that as I go. So that is 81. And then 8 times 3 gives me 24. And let's see what that now gives me. Uh, minus 405 plus 24, which gives minus 381. So let's hit, click continue over here and punch that in. Okay. And if it's a negative number, you just type the minus out front first. Check the answer and good job. Okay, next question. Now we want to simplify an expression. Okay, so notice there's a minus sign out front. What that means, carry that into both of these guys. So let's try that out as well. Okay, so 10x plus 13y. Now I'm going to carry the minus in. A minus and a minus gives me a plus, so plus 4x. This might be a little bit of a uh, math brush up for you as you try this practice assignment. A uh, minus and a plus gives me a minus for that guy. Sorry about that. And now let's collect our terms. Um, so combine the x terms together. That gives me 10 plus 4 gives me 14. Uh, 13 minus 3 gives me 10. Now one note here. If you struggle with any of these questions, again, this is an assessment test. Do your best. If you can't get an answer, it's not the end of the world. Uh, just keep going and move on to the next one. Um, okay, so I'm going to punch in 14x plus 10y, check my answer, and good. Uh, next question here, 2 to the power of negative 2. Okay, so 2 to the minus 2. What that really means, again, a little bit of a brush up here. If there's a negative exponent, that means it's on the bottom. Okay, and 2 squared. 
is 4. Um, type as an integer or simplified fraction. Let's put this in fraction form, so that's 1 over 4. So if you click here, it gives you the option to put in a fraction. So 1, use the down arrow over 4, and check my answer. Next question. Beautiful. Okay, now this guy we need to solve for p. Let's go forward and try that. So a bit of algebra review here. So again, this pre-assignment might help you a little bit get going with your um, assessment test. Okay, so now we need to solve for p. Again, do your best on the assessment test. Um, so now I'm going to divide both sides by r for starters. Get that guy out of there. And then um, that's going to give me um, get rid of the R on this side, and that's going to give me um, C over R equals to 2 plus PW. Beautiful. And then just moving down here. Now I'm going to bring the 2 over. C over R minus 2 gives me P times W. And finally, to just get P on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by W. So P is equal to C over R minus 2, all divided by W. So let's try entering that in. That is quite the thing to enter in. So here we go. I'm going to do a big fraction first. And then within that, I'm going to do a smaller fraction. C divided by R, for starters, minus 2, and all over W. Beautiful. And let's set, check here. It asks to simplify, so let's see. Yep, yeah, that's good enough. Okay, on to the next question here. Good. And very last one here is to practice graphing. Okay, so how you're going to graph, um, if you click on the graph, it gives you an option here, a bunch of options actually, sorry. Uh, we want to use the second one, the line tool it's called. And to draw a line, you're going to need to put two points on the line. So let's go see here. Um, let's call this top one, let's call this line one. So easy thing to do is figure out two points on the line. So I'm going to practice, or I'm going to try, when x is 0, what does it give me? That would give me um, y being 3. Or if you will, 0 plus y would equal to 3, so y would have to be 3. So 0 and 3 is a point on this first line. Okay, uh, and let's now try y equals to 0. And that would give me um, x plus 0 equals 3. So that gives me, just giving a bit more room here, um, again, um, x equals 3, y equals 0. So if I want to put that line on my graph here, first one, um, 0 and 3, I'm going to put on right there. So click on the graph, click on the line tool, and then there's th 0 and 3. And then click another point. I want 3 comma 0. There it is. Beautiful. I want to do this again for my next line, which is this guy right here. So let's try the same thing again, the 0 and 0. So well, let's just call this line number 2. Um, so let's see here. When x is 0, we get 0 minus y equals to 9. And that gives us minus y equals to 9, or y equals to negative 9. So I have a point at 0 and negative 9. Uh, and let's also try y at 0 now. Uh, and we're going to get x minus 0 equals 9. So when y is 0, x minus 0 is 9, so x must be 9. Um, and, okay... Sorry about that. Um, okay, so then let's plot that on our graph as well. So 0 and minus 9 is the first point. So x is 0, y is minus 9. I'm just going to click click the line option. And there's minus 0 and minus 9. Notice in the bottom there it shows you 
uh, your coordinates. And then we also have X is nine and Y is zero right there. Gorgeous. So there are my two lines. Uh, in some of the questions we might ask you to solve graphically for where these two lines intersect um, or both are true and that's right here. So if you notice that's at x equals to 6 and y equals to minus 3. So that's another thing you can do once you've graphed both lines. But in this case it just asked you first of all to graph them. Uh, so let's check that answer. And excellent. Good. Now it asks you what is the solution? Beautiful. So type an ordered pair. How do we do that? So you'll see where the intersect here is at x equals to 6 and y equals to minus 3. So uh, the lines cross at x equals to 6, y equals to minus 3. Now, how do we write that as a pair? Um, we write the 6 first and then the minus 3, uh, and so we type it this way. 6 comma minus 3 and then check the answer very good good job okay so that concludes this orientation you guys should go try this on your own afterwards and you can watch this video as you go uh, do try this before you um, attempt your math assessment test and good luck